Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Okay, uh, we're live. We're on Facebook. Oops. And I'm going to start promoting it. So hang on just one second. Hi, Jamila. Jamila's our superstar tonight. See Heather, Jean, uh, Catherine, Kevin. Be sure to give me sharing capabilities, please. Okay, you got it. Uh, Michael O'Keefe, Laura, we're the Paladin now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that actually. Let me do that first, Jamila. Hang on one second. Um, okay, you should be good to go. Let me just make sure I get everybody else here. Tony, Sam, Rob, good to see you, buddy. Rhonda, good to see you, Rhonda. Rhonda, we were ear was ringing earlier. <laughs> okay, I think I've got everyone promoted so far. Yeah. All right. So, Jamila, usually it takes a few minutes for everyone to get in. There's 161 registrants. So, <laughs> all righty. Good yeah, deal. 15 so far. Usually we'll get somewhere into 30s, 30s or 40s. Every now and then we'll go up to the 60s. We'll see. But it's Thanksgiving right. week. Yeah. It's 80 20 yeah. rule, too. Yep. Uh, <laughs> hey, good to see you guys. Thanks for participating. This is a special night because we have one of our own, Jamila Tudu, is going to talk to you about a little bit about notes, commercial lending, um, and some financial peace of mind. I'll call it peace of mind. It's really financial intelligence, which leads to peace of mind. How about that? So um, while we're waiting, we'll give a, two more minutes and then we'll get started. But does anybody have any questions on anything before we get started? Any, any subject related to real estate, I guess? Or how life in general. How about related to just this? How do I invite a guest? You, all you do is... Um, when you on the registration link, Kathy, uh huh, and um, that you get, you can literally just share that with them, just for that, you know. Okay. Uh, yep. And then what will happen is the way that works is they actually register for like every one we have coming up. I forget for how many weeks in advance, but they can deselect the ones they don't want, or, or I forget how that works actually. But um, <laughs> yeah. all right. Yep. But same it's thing. Probably self-explanatory though when they get it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and then they'll, once they do that, then what will happen is they'll get a uh, notification, they'll get notified, reminders, uh, the webinar's coming up, and also, I believe they'll get the recording of the previous one, which also gives them the agenda for the upcoming ones, so they can see what's coming down the road. Like, for example, next week, um, Jim Martin's going to talk about, he's more of a traditional lender, Jamila's more commercial, uh, okay. and Elise on the 13th is going to speak to us, and then on the 20th, Robert Creamer, my friend from um, the commercial world, he's going to come on and teach a little bit about that. So it's really interesting to have a, normally I'm doing more teaching than not. And lately it's been like, we've had more, more guests. And I'm just glad that we have some, like Alyssa's on the team. Robert would be sort of a kind of a uh, honored sort of team member. And Jim Martin, I've known him for easily two decades. So, um, yeah, this is pretty neat, pretty neat doing this. So I'll tell you what, it is 7.05 Eastern. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. Um, uh, hey guys, if you could give give Jamil a pat on the back, if you wanna do a hand raise or a thank you or just a big hello, you can unmute yourself. Um, she was one of the first members of the team and she's got some pretty good stuff going on as far as development goes. So I want you guys to hear all about this and definitely take notes. We got Liz, Brenda, Beverly, good to see you guys. So uh, Jamila, go ahead and, um, and take her away. I'll keep looking for people to, to promote as they log in and I'll check the questions for you, okay? Okay, good deal. So do you see my screen okay, my presentation? Yes. Yep. yes. Awesome. Well, hello team. 
GIA team, thank you so much for taking the time to come uh, and listen to me and uh, spending this time with the group. <clears throat> I'll try to make it brief and as not boring as possible, but it's a pretty interesting, uh, I like to talk about it. So um, <laughs> we'll go from there. I'm going to talk a little bit about business credit. I'm going to talk a little bit about financial literacy. Um, I didn't prepare to talk about notes, but if you guys have some questions about notes, I can answer some questions about notes uh, the best I can. So um, I will have some availability for that. I'll leave time. This won't be a very long presentation. So um, we'll just start from there. So uh, business credit and financing. The first thing we give you a little bit about me, um, <clears throat> needless to say, um, I guess Gary's already let you know I'm a commercial real estate professional. Uh oh, sorry. Yeah, let me put my do not disturb on. My apologies there. Okay. So, um, so I'm a commercial real estate professional. So I deal with lending as well as sales. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then of course I'm a realtor. Um, I'm also a wealth coach uh, where I actually coach in a financial literacy, uh, but also legacy building. My, uh, my tagline is more than dreams, we build legacies is because I want people to understand that it's more than just getting, you know, that the American dream is more than just buying one house. Uh, let's build legacies. And so that's what I focus on. And that's what I'm very passionate about. It's actually my mission. Uh, or, or more or less my purpose, which is to break the generational chains of poverty in my community uh, through education and economic empowerment by mastering my resources and teaching others to do the same. So that's my purpose. And so any opportunity I have that anybody will listen, um, I'm going to try to educate the best I can in that arena. Um, if you'd like to follow me, this is my website, www.jamilatanu.com. You can find all of everything that I do there. Um, uh, the, the, the three main things that I do there, which are, is the commercial lending, um, the uh, real estate, as well as the note investing. So that's what I do. Um, and, the, and my legacy, my, my legacy buildings uh, course. All right. So let's get into business credit. So uh, business credit is like a huge topic now. A lot of people are, I see a lot of people talking about it on social media and things like that. So just wanted to kind of give an overview of business credit, kind of talk about how to build it, what are some benefits of it, why it's important, um, even uh, for realtors, as well as uh, just any type of business owner and your investors to start to work on building credit. So business credit is a little different. Um, it's, a, it's pretty much an indicator of a business credit worthiness, just like any other credit is. However, um, it also uh, looks at other things to determine the uh, business's ability to repay their debts on time. Uh, so they use, they, they use, it's used pretty much, of course, by other lenders, other suppliers, and uh, other vendors um, that want to use that business credit. So uh, a little bit about, uh, a little bit more, there we go, sorry about that, I, could, I pressed the wrong button. So the, um, the about business credit, it's ranked on a scale from zero to 100. So, you know, it's not like the, where we want to be in the eight, seven, eight hundreds on the personal credit side, it's actually from zero to 100. And it's uh, determined by um, the loan payments, also in the credit risk and their likelihood of the business closing. So when they analyze business credit, they're looking at more than just the, uh, they're looking at more than just the actual, um, uh, the, just the, like it, whether they're paying the credit worthiness, whether they're paying, they're actually looking at other uh, factors as well. So it's a little bit different. So you cannot obtain your business credit for free. You actually have to pay to get a business credit score and a report more or less. And so that costs money. Um, so the agencies that you can get that from is uh, Brad and Dunn Street, uh, your Dunn and Brad Street, excuse me, and then your uh, Equifax and Experian are great resources for you to get your business credit. There are some other entities out there that are kind of, that will give you a free analysis or things like that, but you know, there's a catch for it. Um, so just be aware, be aware of that. So some of the advantages of business credit is uh, protection. Um, it really protects you from, uh, it's, it's very uh, similar to like when you get a business and you need to separate your money, 
uh, no different. You need to separate your credit as well and get, you know, just get everything on the business side. And so that's very important for those that are, um, you know, looking to keep that, you keep themselves protected and out of the business. So that's very important. Also, it helps with your scal scalability because it allows you to get, you know, better, different types of loans and also better um, rates sometimes when you're dealing with business credit. And then it also gives you a lot of credibility and legitimacy to your business. It adds that to your business. So that's something uh, definitely to consider. So some of the things that you can do to obtain the business credit Number one, of course, you need to incorporate your business. So actually have a business. Uh, then also, of course, you have to have a tax ID because that's like the social security number for your business. And then you need to open up a business bank account. Then um, you need to get a business phone number. That's important. So all of these things they're going to be looking at and checking. And then also uh, start your business credit file. So there... So this is kind of funny. So it doesn't necessarily, it's not automatic that when you apply for credit under your credit, your uh, EIN, it's not automatic that it's going to be a credit credit file created. However, you could have applied for something using your business EIN and there is a credit file that's been created. So it might be a good investment if you have had an, an EIN for some time and you have applied for something using that EIN number that you might want to check, take a look at it or have your clients take a look at it. Um, it's better safe than sorry, as my mother always said. Um, you know, get a business credit card. Uh, those are usually very simple to get at like, like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or things like that that give like $100, $250 credit. And also, if you're doing business or if your clients are doing business with someone already, they can, if they've already been, you know, paying on terms, then they can ask them to apply for them. I mean, uh, to file. Then also separate your expenses. Again, that's kind of like a no brainer on the business side. And then go ahead and establish a line with those who you work with. And I said that earlier, got a little ahead of myself. And then of course, pay everything on time. So keep in mind that uh, to build your, your business credit, it, it's gonna take some time. So you have to give yourself some time. And so a lot of your clients may not qualify immediately to be able to use the business credit because they don't necessarily have a mature file. And so they need to make sure that their personal credit is in play. And I'll give a little bit more about that later. So just a little statistic, it says that the average business needs 12 to 18 months to improve its business score credit. So it takes anywhere from a year to two years to really establish something to get going. So before I move on to financing, are there any questions about business credit? Is there, the banks, the lenders look at it differently. Like, um, I mean, you know me, I've got several LLCs, S-Corps, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I know in the past, when I, when I was aggressively buying properties, even though I put them in LLCs, they always had me uh, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And even when, even when I was into the millions, they had a banker tell me, I said, you know what, just because of the, the recession, it doesn't matter who you are, they're going to keep making you sign as a guarantor. Um, but I, I don't know if you have that, if you know, Jamila, but when they look at that stuff, um, is it better, everything you describe there, if I did that in my own name, and then another time I did it in an LLC name, do they look at it differently? Is a like different weighting or anything? Or So most lenders, um, in a short answer, no, they are, you, what you're saying is correct. They do for the actual purchase of real estate and to do the lending, they most likely 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to ask for a guarantee unless you're a fortune 500 company, you know, where you're established, where that business credit will come in handy for your investors is everything else, <laughs> everything else. So any services that you're doing, any supplies you need to get for flipping or rehabbing, anything else outside of the lending, um, you can definitely establish business credit for that. But thank you for bringing that up, uh, Gary, because that is a good point. You're pretty much going to have to personally guarantee for quite some time, uh, yeah. period. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks. Let me, let me just check her real quick. Um, I think we're clear on it. Guys, if you have questions... Um, definitely, this is your opportunity, so I'm going to bring them up if you have them. Um, so I think we're in the clear right now, Jamila. Okay, yeah. good deal. Okay, so here's uh, a little bit about commercial financing. And the reason why I like to give 
it says Rhonda Smith raised her hand. So I think some pe people are raising their hands. Gary, can you see people that's raised their hand? Oh, they have their I, hand, hands raised? Two participants hand raised. Um, yep, we do. Let's see. Uh, Rhonda has her hand raised. Hey, uh, Maybe they want to get promoted. Yeah, Rhonda, I just did allow to talk. So you should be allowed to talk. If you want to uh, unmute yourself, you can ask Jamila a question. No, I didn't have a question. I was raising my hand at the beginning just to say hello. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Gotcha. That's okay. It kept popping up. I'm like, did you have a question? Well, hey, girl, how you doing? Okay. <laughs> so um, to get into financing, um, here is uh, the reason why I like to talk about uh, the getting to the commercial versus uh, residential lending. It's like two totally different worlds, honestly. Um, one of the things that uh, with the commercial, you know, you have to be in a business name. Really kind. Um, it cannot be in a uh, your personal name. And then also it has to be owner occupied. It can be owner occupied for commercial um, for commercial property but it has to be non-owner occupied for residential. So you can use commercial lenders for residential purchases uh, for your, with your investors, um, as long as it's non-owner occupied. Um, it's very asset and income driven versus being like looking at the person, the guarantor is important, but uh, most commercial lenders are very, you know, uh, big on looking at the asset. So it's very, it's kind of difficult to do like a pre-approval on the commercial side because they're approving the asset as well as the person. So um, the person could be well qualified, but maybe the purpose of the building and what they're using the building for uh, is not what is not in that bank standard or that lender standard. So it's really driven by uh, assets. And then the income, of course, uh, on the commercial side it's very, uh, they're looking at, you know, and I, I'll, I'll define this term a little bit later, but they're looking at your debt service coverage ratio, which is they call the DSCR, which is pretty much a, a ratio that shows affordability. Um, so that's something that's not on the residential side. So on the residential side, of course, it can be in your personal name. Um, it's owner occupied, uh, most likely owner occupied has to be. And then uh, let me say that the most of the government backed loans conventionals do not have to be owner occupied let me be back up there but most of the time it's owner occupied um personal credit and income as personal credit and income driven of course um so that's one of the things about the commercial lending and another thing to mention too uh about commercial financing uh that's so different about residential is that like trails of money they don't care. Commercial lenders do not care where your money comes from. So they don't like, they just, sometimes some of them want them seasoned for a certain bit of time, but there's no paper trail required. And so what helps with that, if you need to raise money, do syndications and things like that, um, they don't care. So uh, they, they could care less where the money comes from. It just needs to be seasoned for a certain amount of time. There might be certain programs that require that, but a lot of times they just want to see the seasoning that's been in there one to two months, some of longer. But uh, as far as you needing a paper trail like you do with residential money, that's not uh, necessary. Uh, oops, I have to go through all that. Okay, so here's some vocabulary that might be a little different and unfamiliar to some if you haven't experienced commercial lending. Um, LTV. Uh, y'all know what LTV is, but that's, of course, the loan amount divided by the property value. And then that determines your down payment. Um, so a lot of commercial lending plan for a 70% LTV for the most part is it, land will usually be like 60% LTV. And you got to have like impeccable credit and an impeccable track record to get it up to the 85 uh, to 85 LTV. And there's some that might do more, but you're gonna, probably going to pay for it if there's more. Now, uh, this is a different term, LTC, which is loan to uh, cost. And so what that is, is that's more so for flip for your fix and flips, you look at the construction loan amount. Uh, so that's including the acquisition as well as the rehab. And you divide that by um, the cost so, excuse me, the loan amount that they're looking that you're looking for, and divide that by the total 
project cost, which is the rehab and the acquisition cost. And that'll give you LTC. So what LTC comes in is that that's another determinant. That's another way for them to determine if they'll loan to you. And also it can determine your down payment as well. Sometimes they'll do like uh, 90% LTC, but just 70% LTV, but the 70% LTV will prevail if, you know, something, the 90% LTV is more. So it's just a different way that they look at things. So if you see LTC, then um, you'll know what that means now. So you'll be, it'll be a little more familiar. Uh, recourse versus non-recourse is basically your liability. Uh, if you guarantee it, it's a recourse loan. If you don't have to guarantee it, it's a non-recourse loan. So you'll see that. Um, loan origination, of course, y'all understand what that is. That's just the beginning of the loan, getting everything started, paperwork uh, into the lender. Um, points, uh, you'll see points. Those are expenses. So basically, anytime you see points, you're paying. Points are paid. <laughs> points, if there's points there, you're paying. Somebody's paying. Um, amortization is just a way that uh, the payments are calculated over time. Um, this is you, usually in order to uh, determine amortization, you, the uh, payments on amortization, you need a financial calculator to do that. And um, the reason why that's important is because most of the time we see our residential uh, mortgages are uh, amortized over either 15 years or 30 years is what we normally will see amortization for. But um, usually commercial amortizations, are, they usually will amortize over a certain period of time. This is more for the bigger like uh, commercial loans. Um, not the residential, but they will, um, they will, they will uh, amortize it over like 25 years, but the loan is due in 10. Um, that's very common. So they have the balloon. And so a lot of, uh, that's a definitely an opportunity <laughs> if you know anybody where that's coming up for them to need, they might, they're going to have to refinance into another loan or some might sell it. So um, that's one thing. So I see somebody's hands up. Does anybody have some questions before I move on? Yeah, yeah, Jabila, I have a question. Um, yes. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you could hear me well, but I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I have a I have a company, and uh, I wanted to see if I could leverage uh, the company to be able to buy assets like property. So, uh, okay, like, how long do you have to be in business for to show, and what what is it that they look for for uh, your uh, your financials are they looking for like reports out of uh, QuickBooks or they need mm -hmm. your uh, tax returns or mm -hmm. what's involved with the uh, pre approval process to get a commercial loan? That's one question. Mm -hmm. And the uh, second question is uh, uh, how much did you say you have to put down in order to purchase a property uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, for the company? And do you have to buy the property in the company name to get mm -hmm. the commercial uh, loan? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to answer the, the last question. I'm going to go backwards. So yes, you do have to be, it does have to be in the name of a company. It doesn't matter which entity you choose for it to be in, but it has to be in the name of an entity other than a person. It has to be a corporation, an entity. Um, that's required. The, as far as the down payment is concerned, that is all dependent upon um, your credit and your uh, amount of, of experience so I would say that I'll, for, but for the, and let me say that it's more for investors. For a business, a lot of times you have to look at the, um, the just plan for 70% LTV. That would be the, that's the safer one, 60 to 70. So you usually need anywhere from 30 to 40% down on commercial loans. Now, let me, let me clarify this by saying this is for traditional commercial loans. Now, if you're talking about a business that's been in business for longer than three years, then you can qualify for SBA loans. And so those are a lot more, they have different standards and the, the rates are lower, the terms are favorable. So that's another route to go. So to answer your question about the business being able to leverage your business, so um, as far as like getting cash out, there are opportunities to get like working capital um, and you can get lines of credit and loans uh, for working capital or like equipment loans and things like that, depending on what you need. Um, if you want to cash out, 
to buy property. Yeah, buy, want, uh, investment and, property. Yeah, so um, to use that as leverage, I have not seen people use their business as collateral. I can't. I won't say that there's not anybody out there that won't do that, but I haven't seen anybody use business as collateral when purchasing real estate. Now you can go to maybe a business broker that may know people that may want to loan and uh, you know, a, a, you know, in your business or something like that. But I haven't seen that. Gary, have you seen that before? Specifically, where a business specifically. where a business is used as collateral to get yeah. um to get to to get the real estate the actual business yeah we when do we, when it's yeah, not on occupied it. okay correct we do that so here's how you do it um it has to be business to business so you your your say your dental practice should be an s corp and your property should be held in a, a even a, a single member LLC. As long as it's an LLC, any of the entities inside LLCs, then a lender will let you borrow against your dental practice, the, L, the S, S Corp that, that runs or owns the dental practice. And you can lend that against or to another business. In this case, it's buying real estate. But the fact is, it's an LLC. And you can go back, you can do it the other way too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So that, that is possible. So it, it, but there, if like for a dentist practice, would they be lending yeah. based on like the book of business or would they be lending on income? Yeah, they're they're going to be, they're going to be looking at the whole business. They'll analyze a practice, a dental practice, mm -hmm. just like they analyze a piece of property. Mm -hmm. they're, they're looking at, you know, income, expense, risk, um, things like that. So, uh, uh, you know, somebody that's right out of college is probably not going to get a business loan. Uh, but if they've been in business for three years and the business is going, they'll, they'll get a loan. In mm -hmm. fact, this is crazy. Some states like California, uh, I'm just going to pick on dentists for a second. When they get a, when they pass the exam and get their dentist license, they automatically qualify for a million dollar line of credit automatically. They don't, there's no, mm -hmm. yep. isn't that crazy? Yeah. So. And they can do so, the, and they can use that line of credit to do whatever they they want to do with it. Or is that mainly for working capital in the business? Yeah, that's that's intended to be working capital for the business. Okay. However, what they do is they want to incorporate, and they can use that money, lend the money personally to the corporation, the dental mm -hmm. the dental practice, mm -hmm. and then from there they can lend it out. But you can't do it directly because they'll so that's not a those that's not a qualified yeah. purpose. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. So, so to answer the question then is that it's not anything directly from a lender, which I haven't seen, but it's a way to do it. It's like a pass through way to do it is what you're saying, Gary. Yeah. And we, yeah. Yeah, people um, do that quite, quite a bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so Sam, I know you don't have a dental practice, but as long as you have a business that's been in business for at least a year, showing, showing an income, uh, generally speaking, the longer you're in business, the more credible you are, the less risk you are to a bank. It's all about risk to the lenders. It's all mm -hmm. about risk, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but there are several different, um, there are like equipment and working capital and different things that you can qualify for with your business that you can get. And then like Gary said, you can use that, you know, however, you know, to do that little pass through, through an organ, through your LLC to be able to invest in real estate. So there are several things that are available. And you asked one more question. And I can't remember. I, I have, uh, I have uh, like a LLC, and I have a, a C corporation. Mm -hmm. My uh, C corporation is in Florida, and my uh, LLC is in Michigan. What kind uh, of business are, are they? Uh, property management. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. But they're short-term property management, so mm -hmm. uh, different different business. But uh, you you mean that like I could use the uh, uh, line of credit in my LLC to leverage my corporation to buy property in Florida, investment property for the business. Yes. Yeah, so I can rent them out. Right. And will I be able to use the rental income to qualify for the uh, like a, more of a loan to value? Okay. So the first so, question, the first, yeah, go ahead. the first question, is, I know it's a little bit more tricky, but yeah, do, yeah. And, can, and we have might, you ever dealt with uh, using, no. uh, using uh, future in, uh, rental income mm -hmm. to qualify for a bigger mortgage? That's the question. No, 
I have not. No. I have not personally dealt with the future income of that. Because they do it. They do it with residential. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't see why they wouldn't do it with commercial. Yeah. Uh, and what do you mean by future income? Uh, future rent. So oh, like the future rent. Let's say okay. you you buy two three houses. You get a thousand dollars a piece on each house. That's three thousand dollars more. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, they'll look at they'll they'll look at your rent rolls and see all of that. Take the vacancies into account and all that stuff. So they are looking at the old big picture of on commercial. They're looking at the big picture of your income and how much it's 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 bringing in when it's not rented out for like if it's one commercial building is not rich, rented out. It's considered unstable. So you want to stabilize it as quickly as possible. But um, but that's pretty much you know. So that'll be a more of a bridge loan if it's not. Um, if it's not solidified, but you, I mean, stabilized, but you can still get it. But those are great questions. I'm going to finish the presentation and definitely let's talk offline because I want to make sure I answer all of your questions, but I don't want to take up. I want to go ahead and get through this presentation, but those are great questions. Let's connect offline. Thank you. Okay. Um, were there any other questions before I move on? Because I see some something in the chat, but I'm I not looking at them. I think we're good. caught up. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so of course, closing costs. Y'all know exactly what closing costs are. Um, your net operating income. So the net operating income is your income minus your operating expenses. So you're gonna hear NOI all the time on the commercial side. NOI, NOI, what's your NOI? So um, the NOI is basically, you know, it's, it's, it's just what the, it stands for net operating income. And the, the key to understand here is that the net operating income does not include your debt service. That's another line. So the, uh, the expenses, the operating expenses are just for operating and it does not include your, um, your, your debt in there. So just keep that in mind when you're, if you're doing any type of operating income. And here is the DSCR that I talked about, which is the debt service coverage ratio. And it takes your NOI and divide it by your payment. And it just basically shows affordability. Most, um, the higher the number, the higher the ratio, the better, the higher the number, the better. Um, so some lenders will have a minimum of like 1.2 DC, uh, DC, uh, DC DSCR. Others will have like a, you know, will be more, um, more aggressive and want it to be higher. So it just depends on the lender at that time, as far as which one they'll do it, but they definitely, anything that has income, uh, they're most likely using that income, that DSCR, they're using that as a determinant, uh, determining factor of like your payments and your, your LTV, all that stuff. They're going to use that. And then also LOI is a letter of intent. So uh, we don't do letter of intents a lot on the residential side, really at all. Uh, maybe some investors might do it every now and then, but oh, this is very, very common on the commercial side. Um, it's a way, LOI is just a letter of intent that where you can kind of do some negotiating back and forth on here without having to go through the full contract. Um, or it just gives um, a lot of uh, lenders will use it for if you're like having a tenant come into a property that you're purchasing in order to stabilize it, the lenders will accept an LOI showing that there is an intent to lease out the property once it's done. And then also the letter of intent also states uh, the intention of a lender to loan you money. So there, this is their intent. You'll get an LOI from a lender as well that says this is our um, letter of intent to send to, it's kind of like, it can be kind of taken as like a pre-approval letter um, when you see, get a, a letter of intent. And, and then I, I've used this uh, term earlier, stabilized versus non-stabilized. Um, that's pretty much uh, income producing. So if it's stabilized, that means that it's occupied and it's producing income. If it's non-stabilized, that means it's not occupied and it's not producing income. Why is that important? A lender will not give you a long-term loan, long loan uh, if, it's stabilized, if it's not stabilized. It, otherwise, they'll give you a bridge loan, uh, which is a short-term loan in order for you to get that. So um, sometimes what I'll do, not sometimes, but what I've done before, again, is getting people to do their LOIs first. Um, and then from the, whoever the tenant that they have that wants to do it. And then that way they can go ahead and get a stabilized, um, you know, stabilized status. And then they can go ahead and get better 
terms because bridge loans are expensive um, and they're short term. So you want to go ahead and get into the, the permanent one if you can. Um, and then, of course, equity. Y'all know what equity is, uh, value minus the debt. So um, here are some types of loans just that you might hear. So, of course, you can do conventional bank loans for real estate investing. Um, there's nothing wrong with those. Uh, if you can get them qualified, by all means, go for it. Um, then you, you can also do FHA uh, loans. Now, this I, I include this specifically because I like to talk about the, um, the house hacking piece of it, where you get you know, multiple properties and you um, multiple, excuse me, a multi-unit property and rent one rent you know, and the uh, occupant can live in one and rent out the other ones. So this is something any young person that'll listen to me, I tell them, look, <laughs> get a FHA loan, live in one of the units and go from there. So you can, even though you, um, it, you, you're not considered, in, it's not investor property, you can get an investment property if you live in one of the units um, using an FHA. Um, SBA loans, you can do uh, SBA. There are several different programs under SBA. Um, the 7A loan is the one that's normally used to purchase real estate. Um, there's an, uh, also one that I think it's a 10B, I think it's, if it's uh, what it's called. And, and they, um, those are usually, um, like I said, more favorable rates. You can use those loans, not just to purchase real estate, but you can use that to purchase equipment and, and working capital for your business, things that you need to purchase for your business. So, um, but SBA loans, needless to say, it's a government-backed program. So you're going to have to pretty much open up the books to everything. Um, that's why some businesses usually choose to just go with traditional, uh, just, just commercial lending in general, because there's a lot of boxes that have to be checked with the SBA loan. Uh, then you have your fix and flip loans. These are usually, these are kind of considered bridge loans because they're short-term loans, um, mostly up to 24 months, if you're lucky. Um, not if you're lucky, that's usually common, usually up to 24 months, but you, you don't want to keep them that long because they're really expensive. It's expensive money. Your fixed and flip loans can go up to, you know, start at 8%, 7%, um, and go up to 12, 13, 18% if you're using a hard money lender. So it can be really expensive to do a fix and flip loan. Um, but Hey, you get in the game and most of the fix and flip loans will require you to have some skin in the game. So you got to have some down payment for that. Um, also, you can tap into your home equity. So that would be your home equity line of credit. I know a lot of investors will get started using home equity lines of credit. <clears throat> so that's another type of loan. And then, of course, you can do private money loans. And these are individuals or institutions, uh, private institutions that are not banks. Um, and then you're also your individuals will provide, there's individuals that can provide money, uh, private money uh, to loans to get you started um, in investing. And then of course the commercial investment property loan, um, that's, that would be more of the buy and hold uh, long-term and then the 401k loan. So that's another way people usually uh, don't know about is that you can actually get a loan off of your 401k. And those are very favorable rates if you need that to get you started. Um, I'm not a big, big, I don't like you really taking the, the goose out of the golden, you know, taking, what is it, killing the goose to get the golden yeah. eggs or whatever. Um, however, if you've got a, a plan for it um, and you're going to put that money back, I always have a plan to put that money back. Don't just take it out. Just make sure you know what you're doing and that you're going to put that money back. But it is an option for some people to get started to do that. Um, also, if you have, um, also, if you have a 401k, um, excuse me, an I, a 401k from a previous company, um, or you've opened up an IRA. So if you've got a 401k from a previous company, you can roll that over into an R IRA, whether traditional or a Roth IRA. And uh, the beauty of that is that you can actually self-direct those funds. So right now, usually with a 401k, there's an administrator that takes care of where it gets invested. Well, if you self-direct it, that means that you can decide where that money gets invested. Now, there are some restrictions to that. Uh, some restrictions include that you can't have it for personal gain and things like that. So you want to make sure that you uh, understand the guidelines as it relates to that. 
but you can, a lot of people, a lot of private lenders lend out of their 401ks. Uh, and I mean, excuse me, out of their IRAs. And if it's a Roth IRA, your returns will grow tax free. And so that's why they will use that as an investment tool. So they'll flip houses out of it and buy notes with them and all types of other things. So, so check that out. If you have a 401k from a previous company that you haven't done anything with, you can self-direct that money. Um, and you just have to have an administrator like Quest. And uh, there's another one. I can't think of it right now. But Quest is one place uh, that administers uh, self-directed IRAs and uh, other things. And you can do HSAs. You can self-direct those to health savings accounts. Okay. So very basic qualifications. You have to have a business formation document. You need to have some capital. Experience is good, but not required. Um, you want to have at least a, a personal credit score of greater than 660, at least that's like the minimum. Um, and then you want a business a score of greater than 75. So um, if you have some questions, you can book a consultation with me. If you go to my website, it's like right at the top, you can book a consultation. We can have like a 15 minute discovery call and uh, we can talk about um, whatever you want to talk about. And I can answer questions. And, and if I can't answer it, I can find the answers to it. I work with over 300 different lenders. So um, oh, 300 plus, yeah, several lenders. And we can lend anywhere in the United States and overseas. Um, so, and we lend using, uh, we can lend to businesses for business use and real estate. We can do working capital. We can do equipment loans. So we kind of run the gambit of different things that you can do. So um, if you're interested in learning more, just book a consultation with me, go to my website. It's right there at the bottom left and book a consultation with me. So um, here are some ways to raise your down payment. And I just like to kind of give this so people, cause like, I don't have, you know, you know, $50,000. So here's some ways you can do hey, gap funding. Hey Jamila. Yeah. Sorry, real quick before we jump to the next question. Yeah. The next subject. Gina uh, had a good question. How do you, how do you find out what your business score is? Is what's the resource? So you go to um, the Dun Duns and Bradstreet, Experian, and Equifax will give you your credit report or credit uh -huh. score, um, but you have to uh, pay for it. It's not, there's no free source like it is for us to be able to get our personal credit. You have to pay for it, but you can go to those, one of those three and get that. I would, uh, I would recommend getting it from all three, same way you do that uh, with, um, you know, your, your credit bureaus here, all businesses don't report to all the same ones. Um, but if you're just curious and want to see how it looks, I would go to the Dunn and Brad Street first. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. Um, let's see, very basic qualification went back too far. Okay, now ways to raise money, gap funding. Gap funding is one way that you can get in the game. It's very, very expensive because it's unsecured money. So you're, look, you're looking at like uh, credit card rates. It's very expensive, short term, um, but it gets you in the game. You know, sometimes you just got to get in the game and it gets you in the game. You just pay it off quickly. And um, like I, the remember I told you before that the commercial lenders don't care where the money comes from, as long as you have the down payment and gap funding. So you can get a loan to get down payment. You can't do that uh, on uh, the residential side, but you can do that on the commercial side. It's quite common. Um, another one is through uh, partnering with, with someone. That's an obvious one, but that's, you know, you, you can be the credit, they be the cash or vice versa. Um, or you can split it um, and just go into a partnership with it. Um, if you have other properties, you can do a cash out refi. Of course, you can get it from your savings. And as I said before, you can do a 401k loan. Um, and then um, another way I, I had a thought that I didn't put on here that I meant to say, I didn't know if it was going to be on here or not. I couldn't remember. But the, uh, the gap funding, the partnering, and then the cash out refi. So yeah, that's pretty much, those are ways that you can raise your down payment. Um, and you want to make sure that you, um, with the gap funding, of course, you want to make sure that it's, um, that you, you have a plan to get that paid off quickly because it's very, very expensive. But again, it gets you in the game. Um, here's a bonus that uh, you can have, um, you can become an affiliate. So I'm a, an affiliate with a commercial broker 
Um, so that's that gives me access to several different lenders. And um, as a commercial affiliate, um, you can make money, um, earn money with your commercial referrals. So if you're interested, you can just email me um, or you can set up a consultation as well just to learn a little bit more about that. I think it's a great compliment to anybody's real estate business, especially if you are um, if you're doing business with commercial or investors. Um, why not make the money on that side too, right? Provide the uh, lending and provide the residential. So in Texas, and some people ask, well, is there a conflict? Um, not really, but I would still consult with your broker and consult with your, um, your um, what do you call it? Your association just to confirm. We don't have that issue. And I, honestly, most of my lending is outside of where I'm licensed anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't think I've even done anything in Texas. All of my loans have been like in California, uh, Idaho, and um, uh, uh, I've done one in Virginia. So they've been everywhere but... <laughs> Texas. So uh, there was no conflict there. Um, so you're welcome to email me or you can just uh, go to my website and set up a consultation. It'll take you to the same place. Um, any questions there before I go to the next slide? Are we good? If we, let me check. There's one question. Here I do on have the, one question. Yeah. On the FHA financing, do you know how many meters or how many units you're allowed to do with this? Or Good question. Yes, up to four units okay. is considered residential still. If you get to five, it's considered commercial. Um, and you want to just make sure that your client is occupying the, uh, so I'm, you know, we're recording, so I won't go the rest of that, but call me if you have some questions that we can talk a little bit more about that. But yeah, you just want to make sure that it, there's an, uh, at least one empty unit a vacant unit. So, uh, cause the lenders will, you know, will, you know, raise an eye if it's fully occupied and okay. So where's the, the bar going to live? So, right. So gotcha. thank mm -hmm. you. Good question. Thank you. Any and then, other questions? Yeah. Kathy has a question. Uh, hang on one second. Let me go back up. Come on. Here we go. If, if you have a self-directed account, I assume she means self-directed IRA mm -hmm. and you purchase real estate, as long as the profits go back into the account, this is my understanding, but I figured I would run it by you. So, so th there are some qualifications, so it cannot, anything that you do has to be for the benefit of the IRA and not for the benefit of you. So what that means is that, um, you can, you just want to make sure that, so you could, and then you can't invest in any, anybody that is, um, a, a close family member. So the way you kind of get around that you can invest in syndications, you can purchase notes. Um, you can invest in somebody else's fix and flip, but you couldn't do your fix and flip. Um, and as long as it's, it, but there are some, some restrictions there, but you can, and to answer the, the re rest of the question concerning um, the, the proceeds, the proceeds will go back into the IRA because the IRA is, is what purchased it and the IRA is what's, is, is what's going to benefit. Okay. Um, and then Michael McGann's asking, you missed part of the, Part about earning fees on lending side in Florida and also the realty side that did, did he hear right so yeah so it, like I said I'd always check with it but we've got affiliates all across the country that are mostly realtors and other ones that are mortgage brokers um they just you know set up a different entity but you can you can just uh, the biggest thing is just disclosure just let them know that you've got access to you know several 300 different lenders and you do benefit with the commission by referring them to there and then you just let them know that you know and then I'm also you know you're going to be your realtor here um so you just disclosure is the biggest thing just make sure you disclose but I don't see that there's a quote unquote conflict not on the commercial side now when we get to residential lending that has a little different that's a little different um, than commercial. Yeah. Okay. I Good. think we're caught up there. Yep. Awesome. So this is the last section and uh, I'll be wrapping up. Um, so we talked about, um, I'm going to give a, another bonus. Uh, we talked about, um, you know, business credit. 
Um, but it's very important to talk about the personal credit because as Gary pointed out earlier, you have to be, uh, you pretty much will have to be a guarantor or your clients will need to be a guarantor. So if they are, are suffering with their credit score, then here are some different things that you can help them to know how to restore it. So uh, basically what makes up the FICO score is the payment history as 35% of the FICO score specifically. And um, so that's why it's so important that you pay your, your bills on time. And because if you don't, then it, it, that's why you see such a, that one late payment will drop your score significantly because it's such a large waiting uh, weight on the credit score. So that's 35% of it. So the flip side of it for restoration purposes, excuse me, if there is any error, if there are any errors of late payments on somebody's uh, um, a credit report, or if it's something that's old, that's past um, the amount that it should be on the credit, then that can be disputed. And once it's taken away, then you can see a very huge jump. I had an incorrect um, uh, mortgage payment. I had actually paid the, we had moved and so sold the house, but they showed me one payment late. So I don't know what happened with that. It was after we had closed and everything. So they just didn't close their books out properly. So I disputed that. So my credit score went from like a, um, it went from a seven, it went from like a 680 to almost like a 750, just that quick, just from that. It went up like significantly just from getting that one thing removed. So that's a huge one there. So check your, get, grab your credit score um, there. I don't know if I talk about that here. Yeah. But anyway, we'll, I'll, I'll tell you where to get it. Um, then the amount owed is 30%. So you want to make sure that your, um, that you keep your credit balances under 30% of the, of the um, limit. So if you have a thousand dollar limit, you don't wanna spend more than 300. So one way to quickly boost credit, if somebody that has several different revolving accounts, tell them to pay them all down below 30% and they can see a significant jump in their credit there. Um, also the length of credit history, I don't know who among us, have had that college credit card we got in college and then we paid it off and closed it. And then we saw our uh, credit score drop because that had that was like the longest credit history that you had. <laughs> and so now, you, and especially if it wasn't bad, you just paid it off and got rid of it. Um, that can affect it. So they're looking at your length of credit. So when you're thinking about paying your debt off, especially revolving credit card off, and you've had an account that's been open for 10, 15 years, um, try maybe keep that one open, you know, because that can drastically affect your credit. Because now if you take that 15%, 15 year history off, and the next thing up is, is five years old. So now they're only looking at those debts. So be very mindful of that as far as your length of credit and not closing certain accounts and not allowing those accounts to be closed. So making sure that you're using them. And then new credit, um, they're looking at how often and how much new credit that you have on there. Again, cause that can be a liability. So uh, of course, keep those inquiries down that's where the inquiries come in. Um, so if you see, uh, I, I had one, I had a client that she uh, she went on a Christmas, she went on, into the mall, and I think every store she went in, she applied for their credit card to get that discount when you go into the malls. And oh my gosh, her credit score just tanked. And um, she was like, I don't know what happened. I was like, I know what happened. It was like two pages of inquiries. I mean, it was terrible. And I mean, it was three columns and two pages of three columns of inquiries. I mean, she just went crazy. Um, so try not to do that. And then also the credit mix, the mix of credit. So not just, you know, if all the only thing you have is a mortgage and you don't have any revolving credit or all you have is revolving credit and you don't have any, um, uh, uh, I don't know why I'm losing my thought on there, but like house notes and um, what are those called? I don't know why I'm losing my thought on that one. But anyway, um, amortized notes amortized those that are amortized that are um that if you don't have any of those those single payments those that you pay off if you don't have any of those so you want they want to see a mix of different things over the years and they just want to see that mix so um so if you have a client that everything else is good and they still need a, another boost and they only have their mortgage then suggest they go get a credit card um and that might help to increase their credit so um if you need uh, there's two you can get your credit score for free 
uh, for most of your financial institutions are providing your FICO score for free. So um, you might want to take a look at that and that's free. And then also Discover Scorecard gives free um, um, credit scores as well. And you don't have to have a Discover card. Also, uh, annualcreditreport.com, not free, but annualcreditreport.com is where uh, by law they're required to, the three bureaus are required to give you your credit report for free once a year. Well, since COVID, they've been giving it away once a week. So you can go there now and check it as much as you want to and go ahead and pull your credit. And you can talk to your clients about pulling your credit as well. And that's annualcreditreport.com. Okay. Um, any questions on credit before I move on? I do have a question. Yes. Is it a problem to have a credit limit? Hold on. I can't, I couldn't hear you. Is it a problem to have a high credit limit? Like you have a lot of, um, a lot of credit available. Uh, available, no. Usage, okay. yes. Okay. So if you have, um, if you have high credit availability um, and you are over that 30% mark, then that will affect you. But just having the limit out there, no, that doesn't really affect you. Okay. Uh, but you do wanna make sure that you're using um, it, uh, you know, for the sake of it not closing, but you want to, you know, or uh, just for, for a track record of good credit there. Good question. Any other questions on credit? I think, I think we're, we're clear. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I will provide, um, a free personal credit restoration session preview. So I have a class, a, a, a course on financial literacy, as I talked about, and uh, there is a section on on personal credit rest on credit restoration, and I have given a session preview for free. So if you want to take advantage of that, it's going to tell you how credit works, goes into in more detail about how credit works, how to restore your credit, how to protect your credit, and a DYI credit restoration tool. So those that may need to restore their credit, they can do it themselves. And I also provide a resource if they want to pay somebody to do it, but they can actually do it themselves. So I give them the letter templates and everything that they can do to get it done themselves. Um, so this is the actual website. Uh, you can actually access it as well from my web, from just my website at jamilatanu.com and go to courses. Um, but this is the full URL and you can do the free credit course there. So you can offer that to you. You can uh, take advantage of it or you can actually offer that to your clients as well. So, you know, feel free to have them sign up for that. I have it on um, a pre-course now because I haven't released it yet. And, and but once um, I see people start signing up for it, I'll get it released. But it is there available for you to sign up for it and get this free tool. It's very, very valuable. Um, in helping uh, understand credit and how to restore it. So um, as I said before, it is a, a part of um, my a larger uh, course. So that credit course is a part of a larger course that I have. And basically uh, my premise is, you know, do the, do the work up front, set yourself up for investment opportunities to drop in your lap by building your financial foundation first. And so I teach a lot about financial foundation pieces. And what does that include? So that includes getting your mind right, getting your mindset where it needs to be when you start investing. Also, uh, restoring your credit is very important. Uh, mining your money, uh, making sure that you know how to manage your money, not just budgeting, but also how to um, know what your net worth is because your net worth man is actually uh, de uh, determines and measures your wealth. Um, and that's what they're looking at in those personal financial statements. And so we actually fill out a personal financial statement and then how to eliminate consumer debt. And so we have a systematic way that we go through on how to do that. So uh, basically with the foundation, the foundation, so I'm sorry, basically on this part, what we're doing is building your legacy house. So if you see over here, what we're doing is building the legacy house with all those pieces that I just talked about. Um, so we start with the foundation. I'm real big on money mindset. I'm talking about money mindset all the time. If you follow me on social media <laughs> inside of my group, I always talk about mindset. Mindset is everything because everything starts with your mindset. And so we talk about mindset on pretty much every single module we're talking about 
uh, some type of mindset and having a moment to talk about that. So that is the foundation of what I call your legacy house. Uh, number two is restoring your credit. And that's just pretty much putting yourself in a position to take advantage of wealth building opportunities. I'm not a big proponent of consumer debt um, for the sake of consumer debt, but I do think that as with good credit, it, it provides you the opportunity to be available for opportunities when it comes to wealth building opportunities that come your way. Um, and also uh, mind your money. Again, that's your budgeting, your cash flow management, um, consistent monitoring of your personal financial statement. We talk about that. Um, and it's just like a cash flow management uh, piece there. So that's still building. That's another pillar in the house. Uh, the, la uh, the fourth, uh, third pillar, excuse me, is uh, focuses on the systematic approach to eliminating all of your debt. And then after you do that, then you can start acquiring debt. That's when you, I mean, excuse me, acquiring assets. Because you're putting yourself in a position, your mind is right, you've got the foundation in play, and you know where your money's going, you know where it's coming from, um, you don't have a lot of consumer debt that's weighing on you. So um, I feel like that foundation is so important before you get into the legacy building uh, piece. Uh, then you start acquiring assets. And then after that, the step six is the protection on top of the house. So that protection, I actually talk about protection again throughout all the modules, throughout all the steps, because you need to protect your mindset. <laughs> that has to be protected. You have to protect your credit. You have to protect um, how you, um, you know, your, your cash flow and whatever you budget, you have to protect that. You have to protect your debt, you know, and making sure that there's nothing added to that, um, you know, consumer debt once it goes away. So protection is, is everything, even on top of the fact that you need to probably have a, you know, not probably, but you need to have a will, uh, perhaps, perhaps a trust if that works for you, um, and different things like that insurance and things like that, that are put in play. And we talk about all of those th different ways to protect your assets and everything that you've built and how to protect it. And so that's building your legacy house. So what we want is our house to look like this and not to look like that. So what a lot of people will do is they will just start, you know, trying to acquire assets and then they have take, they haven't put those other pillars in place. And that's why you'll find that a lot of them will end up uh, not being very successful or they, or it's very difficult to move forward. They can still move forward slowly, but it can be difficult. So I, I'm a, I'm a proponent of investing in yourself first, getting your foundation together and your foundation, foundational financial things in place together first, and then moving on to acquiring assets. And so that's what I teach in um, my classes, class here. So um, you're welcome to follow me. You can find that course again on my jamilatanu.com website. And um you can get me, uh, I actually have a Facebook group that's called Financial Freedom Foundations, where I always give good information there. Um, and I'm also on Instagram and there's my website. So you can actually use your phone if you want to. This is a business card uh, QR code that you can actually go and use and um, get some information there. So um, if you're interested, I'm going to put it up in just a second as well here. But if you've got it, if you need to get that, it's right there for you. And that'll have all of my contact information and all of my links to follow me. Um, just put the phone up to there and take a, and you don't have to take a picture. You just put the, like, you're taking a picture and then it'll, it'll pop up for your QR code. Um, and so that's pretty much it. You can actually become an affiliate with that as well if you'd like. Um, if you did the payout, it'll be 20%. So that's roughly about a hundred bucks for every course that your client, um, if you refer a client to this course. Um, so if you're wanting to be an affiliate, you can email me and put the subject affiliate and, um, and let me know. And that's pretty much it. So any other questions and thank y'all so much for listening. And um, I enjoyed the presentation, well, presenting to you and, and thank you all for um, uh, asking such great questions. Hey, Jamila, can you type in the chat box the, the last link, the affiliate at? Um, I gave him the website earlier. So I, I don't have an affiliate link to give, but if they email me at Jamila, yeah. to, Jamila at jamilatanu.com, or you can just use the QR code. I already had it over here. Um, the QR code, then you'll find, uh, you can just text me or email me with that information from the digital business card. Okay. Well, one thing I want to really emphasize, guys, here is um, 
and we'll, we're going to take off some questions is remember Jamila's she's one of the team okay so if you think back to the original intention of, of this team it's not a traditional team where I'm doling out the leads and everybody pays 50 50 this this team is not about me and my name's not even on it's about you and Jamila took it to heart and she developed this on her own I mean I gave her some some guidance along the way but make no doubt about it this material everything she learned about commercial lending is all hers okay so you got the same opportunity and remember you're don't just learn the academics of how to work with clients and how to invest follow what we're doing and look at the examples in the team um, of people actually following the big picture model which is me creating a platform to help you build your business i mean she's living a legacy she's helping people become financially literate you know she's got a, cl a group for for it's for women and it's one of the things i suggest for every every female listening here i'm not trying to be uh, stereotypical against men but one of the greatest marketing phenomenon is when you put the words in there at the end of whatever your brand is product or service for women okay you might be thinking well gary i'm eliminating half the, the population that may or may not be true but the fact is you'll capture a very large share of that of that segment and just it's i'm telling you as a business person i highly encourage you to embrace that even if you just do it to get started and later on you can open up to the rest of the world but um the main point i'm trying to make here is i want you to see yourself in jamila's spot right now and ask yourself do i want to do something like that how can i do it and when do i want to do it okay so you don't have to it's but it's absolutely there and possible for you and available to you so in any case uh enough said about that um, let's turn it back to jamila Who, who's got uh what kind of questions do you have guys there's a there was a load of information there, commercial and residential too, you know? So Gina said, I don't know about borrowing the down to borrow commercial funds to invest. Well, Pete, yeah, they do it all the no, time. I, I didn't know that. And you oh, talked about yeah. that. That was yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> they do not care where it comes from. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good deal. Yeah. Jamila, I have another question for yeah. you. So did you say that the... Um, the free to credit course is free. Can we give that out to our clients? Is that free? Absolutely. It'll be free. Okay. I provided it for you to give to them for okay. free. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And then I, I do have a couple of women that I have loved working with um, and I suggested for them to get a commercial line of credit. So is that a course that you teach specifically and how much is that? So for commercial line of credit, no, those are a little difficult to get for investing okay. um, without a business. Usually you can they get the business. business line of credit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely. We can talk about that. Um, okay. You can set up a call with me, a discovery, a lending discovery call with me and <laughs> um, and just invite them to get on. And then we can all learn together at the same time. And I can see if I can help them with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jamila, I didn't catch all of the um, address for that course. Okay, <clears throat> let me go back you for offer. you. It's if you just go to Jamila Jamila .com and go to courses, you'll see it there. Um, let me see if I can go back to it for you. Let's see. Come on. Nope, I went way too far. Hold on just a second. <laughs> let me find it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm not sharing good. So y'all don't see all this. Okay, go ahead. I'm gonna find it for you. But yeah, it's just Jamila .com and go to courses and it'll take you to all of my courses. And, um, but I'm going to get that to you. Yeah, right. This one started out with courses and then. Yep. Not I'm going to get Jamila. you. Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. I got you. Let me share it for you now. Here we yeah, go. Jamila, you gotta, you gotta move faster. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. There you go. Yeah, but there, you know, you're welcome to share that with your clients um, to to sign up. Uh, like I said, I'm still I'm still putting the the finishing touches on it, um, you know, because I had to convert it for uh, to make it a preview. But if if once they sign up, they'll get the email when it's when it's available. But it's on pre pre sale pre pre sale now. But it is free. All right, thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Okay, guys, we got we. Um, I can stay on a little bit here. We, we normally go half hour over. Like that's come, become my new normal. <laughs> yeah, you might really? change that on there. It's an hour and a half. Just yeah, and I, and, I, and I do have ice cream. So I, I believe me, I can take off any time. <laughs> I, just, I just kidding. You guys, uh, fire, fire away. I mean, it's, it's uh, not too often we get one of our own 
um, teaching. So I, I know it's something we deal with all the time, but I know one of the questions that came up about a month ago was what actually happens behind the scenes? What actually happens in the world of lending? And you got you got a good a good bit of it tonight here. You know, I, some of the stuff that came up, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there smiling because these things I've, I've done in the early years, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just was learning. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, one of them was getting that commercial line of credit. I did get one, but I did have at the time 10 properties under my belt, about 30 units. And I did have an, an LLC set up. So I had the components. I didn't know that's what was required. I just happened to, to have the right requirements. Mm -hmm. And the guy I got the loan from, turns out he was a um, commercial lender, but also did private lending. Um, really neat uh, gentleman. He's, he's, he's still with us. He had a, a tie that had dollar signs on it. You know? <laughs> but uh, my he really helped me get a big jump in my business, a big jump. I mean, I, that one move was let me well, let me go from level one, which is buying shingles and duplexes and stuff like that, to go to the next level, which which was an a, a 11 unit building. Um, and I'm sorry, nine unit building. And uh, that was in the commercial world. And the, the cool thing was, I didn't realize how rare this was. The money he gave me, he didn't make me refinance all those 10 properties. He gave it to me based on the collective equity across the 10 properties mm. and did it as a commercial blanket uh, line of credit. And mm. uh, so he, I don't know if he saw something in me or I just happened to, to you know, check all the boxes off. But I'm telling you that this, this is, you can do this. I mean, if I'm, I know it's a cliche, if I can do it, I'm telling you, you can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, you just got to put yourself out there. Like Gina just realized on a commercial loan, it's okay to get money for the other part. You know, in the residential side, they really want to see you have your own cash. In fact, if you get cash from somebody else, they want to see a letter, like somebody, get, a local gave you a gift or something. But a commercial world doesn't, they just, they're looking at their numbers and their risk. You know, mm -hmm. so any case, uh, how about some more questions? We've got some typed in here. Let me see. Uh, thank thank y'all for, for the sharing. love. Thank y'all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know what I was going to say before when I said I couldn't remember what I was going to say it was uh, seller carry. I don't don't um, uh, commercial lending and investing in general. Uh, that's another creative financing way is to ask the seller to carry a note. Um, one of the things that uh, is important to understand. I'm going to stop sharing if that's okay. But one of the things to stop to understand um, is that when um, when investors and just re even just regular your regular homeowners, especially if they own it free and clear, um, they you know some of them like okay, I just want to get the equity. If they don't need the equity, if they're just going to take it and go invest it somewhere else. Um, you know, that's a great opportunity for them to create a note. It's a win-win for everybody around the table. So don't um, think that owner that, that them going to the bank is always the only option. Um, sometimes you can talk to your listings, your sellers and, 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 act, and, and just under, uh, help them understand the value of seller carry and how that creates cash flow for them over time and they can make money that way. So that's one way um, to get creative. And, and I, I believe that uh, when the market shifts again, that that's going to be very um, uh, understanding that can actually be very beneficial for you because the banks eventually are going to tighten up on their standards and uh, those rates are going to go up a little bit and um, you, you know, seller carry will be very uh, beneficial. Also, um, the fact that seller financing also opens up um, more buyers. Uh, so that's another thing when the market shifts, it allows and opens up more buyers. But even now as an investor, still recommending that and uh, showing them the benefit of cash flow. If you don't need the money, you know, then, then you can cash flow, get, get your cash flow. And so that's uh, one deal I'm working out right now to do that. Uh, my first I'm working on my first flip. So uh, that's one of the things that I'm negotiating right now is for them to sell a carry. I do that. Um, it's very, very little I have to put down. And then um, most likely the way I structure it, I won't have to even pay him any interest. So that'd be beautiful. He doesn't know that, but the way that I structure it, it's as long as they understand that they're getting, he's getting $700 a month. That's what he likes. But I just told him I pay him $700 a month until, um, until it's paid for. And so for him, he, he, all he hears $700 a month. He's not caring about the interest rate. 
Um, they're just not that savvy. Uh, my investors are that savvy, but but this particular consumer is not that savvy. But it's still a win-win all around. They get cash flow. I get to get in the house, and then I also most likely will um, flip it and and originate my own note from it as well, versus just getting the cash up front. So I can get a down payment cash up front. I can get uh, cash, um, you know, cash flow, and then I can also get cash later from the payoff, which usually they pay off anywhere from seven to 10 years. So that's uh, my strategy that I'm using. So I'm excited. So it's a win-win for everybody. So I'm excited about that. So if you want to learn more about that, again, set up a call with me. We can talk about it. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Julia. Thanks, uh, um, Gina, for posting the article from Biz Journals about interest rates going up in 2022. And mm. um, and you guys will start to see, some of you, I've already heard comments from some of the agents around the country where lenders are starting to say things that indicate they're starting to get a little bit bearish. They're mm -hmm. saying they're asking more questions, they're scrutinizing more, and they're even making comments to the consumers saying, hey, you know, we're, we're going to start kind of tightening up a little bit. We got too much in, in this one sector. They call them silos. Um, and they're, they're just pre-warning people. In fact, the, the big capital markets have already pulled back, you know. So it's, you know, they're not trying to make this thing happen. They're just being smart. You know, let's mm -hmm. face it. In the world of business, who's at the, who's at the top of the food chain? The, the banks, the lenders. <laughs> so they're, and they're there because they're pretty smart with their money and it's all about risk. So um, back to the beginning, the name of the game is we got to really, got to really watch your, you know, if, if, you know, it's fun to teach you how to make money, but you've got to really play defense too and protect your credit, protect your assets. Use LLCs, use trust, you know, use use life insurance. We've talked about that three three times in two months, um, which is another alternative to traditional borrowing. So when the banks tighten up, you know, our one of our end games is to produce a portal where people with cash values and their life policies can look at our clients' projects to fund. See that you what how that works. So in any case, uh, um um We'd like to be number one in that in that sector. We'll see how fast we move. We got other things going on. Oh, speaking of other things, so Dan Levy is now working on a second property for for corporate housing. The first one's going to be live in January. The second one's going to be later, like in May. And he's already got the website built and the inside infrastructure um, is already built. So we're gonna we're gonna add another sector probably starting in January. I don't know if Randy Weaver's on the night, but it's the film industry when they go to film a movie off site. They need a place to stay for three to nine months. And it, there's huge demand there. There's actually re, um, recruiters that deal with that type of stuff. So uh, we're gonna show you that portal probably in January and you can, you guys can participate in that. But, but again, another example of somebody on the team that that, that stepped up and and built their, had a vision and, and uh, you know, let me help them build it and pave the way. That, that's, that's what I'm here for. So use me for all I'm worth, you know? So. Okay, any, any other questions? You guys okay? Anybody getting hungry, tired? I think the Californians are ready to supper. East Coast is ready for dessert. No, East Coast is ready for bed. Several <laughs> times when people are ready for yeah, dessert. East Coast is <laughs> 8 o'clock. Yeah, it's time to wind down. Yes. Okay, guys. Uh, uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and your families. Uh, you. No more meetings this week. And uh, we'll see you next Monday. And I'll be teaching that class. <laughs> So uh, take care of yourself. Oh, Gary? Yes. About that class, you wanted us to send in, which I haven't done, but you wanted us to send in our uh, schedules, remember? Oh. If you guys have your scheduling and planning the way you're using it and you want me to use it in a class um, to critique, please send it to me ahead of time. Like, if, and please, you know, in other words, don't wait till um, dinner time on Monday. <laughs> but mm -hmm. send it, there you go. Yeah, send it a, you know, Friday, something like that. I'll take a look at it. And uh, we'll use it Monday night, that Monday night and 29th. And that's going to prepare us for what's coming down the road. Um, we'll have a very nice celebration in December. Uh, we're going to give some awards away and stuff like that. And we're preparing for what's going to start on January 3rd. For the month of January, vision, goals, action plans, we're going to do it together as a group. Um, and I think you're going to be, uh, be pleasantly surprised. And, uh, but there's people on the team who are already are doing it and getting results. You know, Jamil is one of them. So. Um, it, it works. It works when you're working, you know? So, okay. Gina, anything you can think of that I'm not saying or 
Yeah, if Jamila didn't do such a good presentation, we'd have had more questions. Oh, thank you. you You're welcome. <laughs> it was really good. Thank yeah, you. Very, I appreciate very that. Very well prepared. Yep, you did an yep. excellent job. And and uh, can everybody give her a hand on the back, a hand raise, or, a, or you can you can unmute yourself too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yep. Appreciate that so much. And and, di and give her give her some love for when you got when you got clients that are looking. For non non owner occupied loans, remember commercial loan can be used for a duplex. You know, send them to Mila's way. She you can get money and even in Canada, right, Mila? U.S. and Canada. So Canada, no, Canada because is considered uh, foreign. So, but in the United States, but we do do foreign, but we have to start at ten million to do foreign. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll pull our funds together and then yeah, we'll, do some we'll, hotels. Yeah. We'll do a couple hotels. Yeah. <laughs> we got some, got some on the horizon, oh, guys. let me say this too. I yeah. forgot to say too that um, I I do more what's called non QM money, non qualified money. So if I do talk to you and consult with a client and just, and see that they do qualify for a bank, I will push them back to the bank and tell them try the bank first and then come back to me. Um, so because it's a little more expensive, the non qualified money is a little more expensive. Um, and I like to sleep at night. So if I know somebody will qualify, will, will most likely qualify um, for it, I tell them to go seek it, seek the bank first. And sometimes, again, depending on the type, the way that they're using the property and things like that, the bank still won't fund it. Um, but if they've got an excellent credit score and they're, you know, wanting to just do a simple, you know, buy and hold, um, you know, I tell them to go to the bank first because, you know, that's going to be uh, a better, a better, uh, option for you. But I do do that. So just, just to qualify what I do. So if the banks can't do it and so if the banks can't do it, then bring them to me after that. Okay. Nice. Well, but I do have banks opportunities too. I do work with some banks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We've got some big projects coming up guys. I mean, uh, uh just to, our Bobby's not on, but you guys know Bobby Appleby's the first person to cap on a team and he's the second he's the first per first person to cap the second time too but he's getting ready to close uh and as a partner on a 345 million dollar project okay Ooh -wee. beautiful I forget the number of units it's just crazy bigger bigger than anything i've ever worked on for me it was the largest was like 100 million and he and i are working on starting working on something that actually is 100 million together so uh and then uh, christina coleman has got uh, i think two in the hopper um let's see yeah, two in the hopper. So when the opportunities come, see it, 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 you might not see it right now, but it's going to happen. And what happens, just remember the first word out of your mouth should be yes, you know, and, and we'll, we'll get you through it, you know? So sound good? Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody listen, safe travels, you and your families. Um, I appreciate all the well wishes, you know, and, and also for Teresa too and um, Beverly Miller. I mean, it's, uh, it's it's wonderful to be part of a group that's got not only the brains but but the heart too. So we so we all we appreciate all of you, and uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine being part of a better group. I just it's amazing. So you guys take care. Happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next Monday. Bye everyone. <laughs>